mood disorders or affective disorders. Depression. Depression is characterized by low mood, loss of interest and concentration for at least two weeks along with associated symptoms of insomnia, decreased libido and energy, etc. The hypothesis of depression upon which most of the current drugs are based upon is the monoamine hypothesis. A diagnosis of depression is made when a patient has anhedonia, which is the inability to enjoy pleasure-giving activities with low mood in at least five of the nine symptoms of the SIG caps, where S is for either increased or decreased sleep, there is usually loss of interest. G stands for guilt or hopelessness. E is for low energy levels. C is for decreased concentration. A is for change in the appetite, which can be either increased or decreased. P is for psychomotor agitation or psychomotor retardation. And the last S is for suicidality and loss of interest in sexual activity, which is loss of libido. At least five of the nine symptoms, if present for at least a period of two weeks or more, then the patient is classified to have major depression. Now let's talk about the monoamine hypothesis. In patients of depression, there is a decreased amount of monoamines like serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine in the limbic system. These monoamines either undergo metabolism by monoamine oxidase type A or monoamine oxidase type B, or they may undergo reuptake into the presynaptic neuron. Hence, the main aim of treatment is to increase the monoamines by inhibiting either the metabolism or the reuptake by giving monoamino oxidase inhibitors or tricyclic antidepressants respectively. The tricyclic antidepressants non-selectively inhibits the reuptake of all the monoamines and hence selective reuptake inhibitors were synthesized like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, which belong to the second generation drugs with lesser side effects. An increase in monoamines in the synapse increases the brain-derived neurotropic factor production and there is an increase in the neuroplasticity and neuroprotection. This takes around two weeks and hence a lag period in the antidepressant effect is usually seen. Monoamino oxidase inhibitors. MAO is a mitochondrial enzyme of two subtypes, A and B. MAO A is present throughout the body and metabolizes all the monoamines, whereas MAO B is present specifically in brain and metabolizes dopamine. Remember MAO B before brain. Non-selective MAO inhibitors are irreversible inhibitors of both MAO A and MAO B. The drugs in this class are phenylzine, isocarboxazid, and tranylcypramine. Selective and reversible MAO A inhibitor is moclobimide. MAO inhibitors are more effective than tricyclic antidepressants in atypical depression. These drugs are not preferred due to a wide range of side effects and drug interactions. The MAO inhibitors can inhibit the metabolism of tyramine in tyramine containing foods and drinks like cheese and red wine and it can precipitate a hypertensive crisis that is cheese reaction. The MAO inhibitors are also hepatotoxic they inhibit the serotonin metabolism and any class of drug that can increase serotonin in the synapse is contraindicated due to the risk of serotonin syndrome. The drugs that can increase serotonin include 
Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and tricyclic antidepressants. Tricyclic antidepressant medications. The TCAs are reuptake inhibitors of serotonin and norepinephrine, and currently the second line of drugs in depression due to the side effect profile of this class of drugs. Clomipramine has maximum serotonin reuptake inhibiting effect and is the best TCA for the treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder. Desipramine has maximum norepinephrine reuptake inhibiting effect and is used in cocaine dependence. Amipramine can be used in nocturnal enuresis but is not preferred nowadays due to its toxicity. Amoxapin has D2 blocking effect as well and hence it is used in psychotic depression. Due to its D2 blocking effect, it can cause extrapyramidal side effects. Amitriptyline causes maximum anti-muscaranic action among all the tricyclic antidepressants. TCAs like nortriptyline and amitriptyline are drugs of choice for post-herpetic neuralgia and are used as a first-line drug for peripheral neuropathy. Nortriptyline is also used in smoking dependence. The TCAs being non-selective inhibits groups of other receptors in the body like H1 receptors, alpha-1 receptors, serotonin receptors, and muscarinic receptors. Due to this, a number of side effects can be listed. The inhibition of the histamine and muscarinic receptors cause sedation, hence TCAs are also used in the treatment of insomnia. The inhibition of the muscarinic receptors cause anticholinergic side effects like dry mouth, constipation, urinary retention, so on and so forth. The serotonin and histamine by acting on hypothalamus cause anorexia, Hence, by inhibiting the H1 and serotonin receptors, antipsychotics increase appetite and cause obesity. The alpha-1 block causes dilation of both arteries and veins, and hence carry a risk of postural hypotension. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The SSRIs are the most effective and least toxic antidepressants and hence are the drugs of choice currently. The antidepressant effect of SSRIs are seen only after a period of four to six weeks of drug therapy, and this period is called as the lag period. SSRIs are the drug of choice for treatment of depression, premenstrual syndrome, and neurotic disorders like obsessive compulsive disorder, phobias, post-traumatic stress disorders, generalized anxiety disorders, bulimias, and anorexia nervosa. Fluoxetin is a prodrug metabolized into an active metabolite, narfluoxetin. Hence, fluoxetin is the longest-acting SSRI and is the preferred SSRI for all conditions mentioned so far. Being the longest acting on abrupt discontinuation, its concentration gradually decreases in plasma and hence withdrawal symptoms are not seen with fluoxetin. Once in a week formulations are available only for fluoxetin. Fluoxamine is the shortest acting followed by paroxetine and hence these are associated with maximum withdrawal symptoms with fluoxamine having more withdrawal symptoms than paroxetine on discontinuation. Citalopram is used specifically in premenstrual syndrome and agitation. Paroxetine is the most potent enzyme inhibitor and also is associated with teratogenic effects like cardiac malformations it causes maximum erectile dysfunction and is associated with anticholinergic effects as well. Side effects with SSRIs. The side effects with SSRIs are primarily 
due to an increase in serotonin levels in the body, which acts on the various serotonin receptors like serotonin type 2, type 3, and type 4 receptors. Serotonin type 2 receptor in the brain increased stimulation of postsynaptic 5-HT2 receptors in the brain causes anxiety and insomnia. These effects persist for initial two weeks and then disappear due to receptor downregulation, which is 5-HT2 receptors move into the neurons. So after two weeks, angiolytic effect is seen. To negate the anxiety in the initial days, SSRIs are always started with the benzodiazepine. The 5-H2 receptors in the spinal cord Increased stimulation of the 5-HT2 receptors in the spinal cord causes erectile dysfunction and delayed ejaculation. Hence, SSRIs are used off-label for the treatment of premature ejaculation. These effects are maximum with paroxetine and are most common long-term side effects with this drug. The 5-HT3 receptor in the chemoreceptor trigger zone, which is located in the area postrema, causes an increased stimulation of 5-HT3, resulting in nausea and vomiting, which is by far the most common acute side effect of SSRIs followed by anxiety. The 5-HT4 receptors in the GIT increases contraction and causes loose stools. Citalopram causes QT prolongation, and all SSRIs cause serotonin syndrome characterized by autonomic instability, delirium, myoclonus, hyperthermia, and coma. Withdrawal of SSRIs can cause fatigue, paresthesias, and flu-like symptoms. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. The SNRIs act just like TCAs, well, the only difference that they do not act on other receptors in the body and hence are devoid of TCA-associated side effects. However, they retain the side effects of SSRIs caused by elevated serotonin levels. The SNRIs and TCAs are more preferred than SSRI for treatment of melancholic depression. These drugs are used as second-line drugs in depression, currently after SSRIs. Venlafaxin is used for post-traumatic stress disorder and panic disorder. It is associated with perinatal complications and hence should not be used in pregnancy. Diastolic hypertension can be seen with venlafaxin and hence should be preferred in patients with hypotension and depression. Desvenlafaxin is longer acting than venlafaxine. Duloxetine is used for fibromyalgia, stress incontinence, and peripheral neuropathy. It is the longest acting SNRI and the wash off period with MAO inhibitors, that is, the monoamino oxidase inhibitors is of only one week. Selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Atamoxetin is a drug of choice for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder associated with La Tourette syndrome, the serotonin type 2 antagonists. In depression, a decreased synaptic serotonin causes upregulation of the postsynaptic serotonin type 2 receptors. Hence, inhibition of these receptors also has antidepressant effect. Trazodone and nefazodone are older drugs in this class. Nefazodone has been banned due to hepatotoxicity. Trazodone causes sedation and is used along with SSRIs and SNRIs for the treatment of associated insomnia. It can also cause priapism and has been used in erectile dysfunction. Mirtazapine and meanserin are the newer drugs in this class which increase the norepinephrine levels 
by the alpha 2 block and serotonin levels by the 5-HT1A block and hence are known as the noradrenergic and specific serotonergic antidepressants. These drugs also block the H1 receptors, the 5-HT2 and the 5-HT3 receptors causing sedation and an anti-emetic effect of these drugs. Mirtazapine is the drug of choice for treatment of depression associated with insomnia and is given at bedtime.